Yeah, yeah, very good. Hey, good. A little bit distraction doesn't sh uh, doesn't put us down, eh? Oh, absolutely. Nothing can stop us, right? No, nothing. No problem. Hey, Chad, good to see you, sir. Yep. Um, Cody Tanner. Hey, how you doing? Um, so, man, woo! Facebook uh, slowed us down a little bit. A little bit, eh? Stop us. Stop us. Yeah, but we're there. Yeah. How's the Netherlands, man? How's, uh, how's yeah, the weather in the Netherlands? The uh, weather is very good, but too dry. I need rain. You need rain? Yes, it didn't rain for six weeks or something. Man, it was, there, there's, there's been too much water here in Texas. I'm, uh, so I'm you can send, a, send me something. Oh, no, I can't, I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait for, uh, you know, the, the really hot summer to come in. Yeah, that's I've, good. Been, I've, I've been just so tired of, uh, you know, cold water and all that. And you know how it is with the dogs, you know, and then you have, yeah. uh, when there's a too much mud and all that, you just, uh, all messy. It's, 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 it's no good. It's no good. Man, good to see you. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad that yeah. we, we talked. Kicking talking. out alive. Yeah, and we're 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 alive. Absolutely. Hey, so um, we got we got we got guys coming coming in. Uh, we had over thirty five people uh, in the in that in that two minutes uh, live on Facebook, uh, and uh, that was a shame it didn't come through. Yeah, too bad. But hey, this works, so that's good. We go with this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Hey guys, whoever uh, whoever logged in and uh, want to ask questions um, to Carbon, uh, we're gonna be talking about um, training, um, dog selection, puppy selection, um, 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 how Carbon sees nowadays. Uh, you know where the whole uh, breeding and the bloodlines where it goes, and then uh, you know. Um, uh, what is the what is what is the future going to look like? Um, where all this um, uh, Belgian Malinois and, and Dutchies uh, breeded headed to? So um, I had uh, I have some questions um, um, that you guys sent me through uh, Facebook, um, and so I'm gonna ask um, I'm gonna start asking questions. Is that okay, Carmen? You yeah, go ahead. No problem. Jump in anytime you wanna. Uh, you wanna just uh, do something different or talk about something. So yeah. I have this first question here, Kevin, and that's um, uh, that's a selection for law enforcement. Um, uh, what are some of the strong? Uh, no, the first question is selection for law enforcement. How do you go about selecting a dog for for law enforcement? What do you look for? What is important to you? What can be um, changed? What can be um, trained and uh on the contrary on on the other hand what are the most uh, most um important things that the dog has to have that no trainer regardless how good the trainer is cannot change so so again what uh what are you looking for uh in selection <coughs> for a long i think i think leos i think uh the biggest problem uh, uh nowadays is that uh people uh, prepare dogs for, for testing. So, uh, in my mind, uh, a dog must have all the genetic tools and all the, the drives and, and, and the stability to be a strong dog, a good dog for the work. It, at the moment you uh, start preparing them for testing, I think uh, uh, it's already not a good enough dog for us. Because I think uh, uh, the best dogs uh, I bought, like Finn, you got from me, I think was seven months. I think at, that, at the seven months, he was already a perfect candidate for a very good duel, I think. And that is pure because his mind, <clears throat> is, uh, his, 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 his uh, genetics and his mind and his character is already there. So that gives us then dogs we can work with and keep, we can uh, prepare them for the real world. But that's totally different than preparing dogs for, uh, like I think that 90% of all the brokers do, uh, uh, prepare them for testing. Because uh, 
I think a dog uh, really good and really strong and really good uh, character. You can take every day out to every place and he will show you everywhere the same work. And I think that is important. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I see I see the same problem. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it every time uh, when, when somebody brings dogs for training. And, uh, and because I, uh, I come from Europe, I've been in the United States only three years, a little over three years. Uh, um, I lived in Europe. I was on the side of, of um, you know, people that were selling dogs to the United States. And then uh, I was on the side of uh, trying to get money. Um, uh, not so much me, but uh, all, the, uh, all my friends uh, were, were – um, trying to get money out of the business, you know, milk, milk, milk America, milk United States. Um. I, 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 I don't think it's, it's milking the U.S., but I see it also uh, here in Holland for uh, the, uh, the, the police uh, who's buying dogs, of course, here as well. Uh, I see people uh, uh, start uh, uh, with puppies six weeks, uh, only hunt on 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 uh, stainless steel uh, square pipes, yeah, and that is the only thing the Dutch police test for hunt. And uh, uh, and I think basically, uh, uh, if a dog really has good drive, I can teach him everything. You know, I can I can teach him to pick up a copper pipe. I can teach him to pick up a ball, whatever I throw, he can bring. You know, that's not a problem. But I see them specifically only throwing that object so people even in kmpv uh, are preparing already for uh, uh, testing and i think uh, that must go totally out of our system if we want to uh, uh, make really really good dogs and not i don't say dogs for business but really good dogs what you like what i like what we can work with then uh, if I decide one day to go out and just play play only ball with him and he only knows a copper pipe, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? It In the brain, it must be good. That's important. He must be open. Yeah. He must be uh, easy easy access uh, uh, and train, trainable. And, and that is the biggest problem. I think... Uh, there is two in in the in the in the old days they were not preparing for testing. I think they just simply were busy making uh, uh, really strong dogs, and not by training but also by breeding. And and that is also the case. You know, um, I think uh, uh, it starts already with select. The, the, it it starts already with selecting. Um, uh, the 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 mother and the father of the litter, you know. Um, and that's uh, that's actually not a question here, Herben. Um, um, that is that comes from uh, uh, one of one of the guys that are actually here uh, right now watching watching you. Um, what do you? What are the, some of the? Um, um, the what are the traits you look for in a stud and a female? Um, and um, also, John Hunt, uh, who has a uh, Ashi, is asking, "What what do you look? Same thing. What do you look for uh, in a female and a male before the breeding, so you get, um, you know, good good strong dog with clear head." I, I what I look for is uh, I want to see a dog um, who is uh, very open in his mind. Um, in the work, but also outside the work. I think outside the work is for even for breeding females much more important. Because um, if he's very open in his mind, if he's, um, uh, the environmentals are very, very good, um, that's one thing I don't have to have to have a problem then anymore with, you know? Because I don't think uh, the dogs in general lack drive. I don't think that. I think in general they don't uh, lack uh, 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 good biting in general. But I think in general uh, uh, what really puts us down is that uh, environmental, the dogs are not strong enough. So genetically, 
is super important because uh, uh, I give you a small example. I, I raised a litter here at my farm. I'm now living. I, I, you know, I, before this, I, I lived in the city, so it's a little bit more easy. The dogs see much more. But this litter, uh, two months ago, I decided to take my female to the city here and uh, to the train station and just uh, give her a walk. And she never saw a train and she never was in the city. She only was here uh, at the farm. And came out of the car, super nice temperament, uh, tail up all the time, uh, want to greet people. Uh, train station didn't care if people came up, if people walked down, if the stairs. I, I walked one time up, one time down, ready. And that is what I want to see. I, open, I mean, uh, that they can quickly learn, like you do the stairs one time, the second time they already know. Yeah. And the other way, environmentally, they must be so steady in the, in the head that uh, uh, it doesn't bother them. They don't see fear and fear or danger. A good example also, uh, 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 I think, with Finn. Um, uh, the first time I took him upstairs and very uh, on a very uh, uh, high high grounds on the, in the soccer stadium, and he, he never saw that before. He wants to jump over; it's twelve meters down. Yeah, so I'm fucking happy I had him on the leash. So, and that is a kind of uh, outgoing character. I think a, a really good, strong dog really needs. And that I think must be there in the male and also in the female. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I must say that, uh, yeah, uh, I have a Finn from you. Uh, Finn is um, definitely one, or if not the best dog I've ever had. And I had a quite a quite a few dogs, um, uh, and yes, environmental environmental uh, resilience um, it's 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 absolutely crucial. That's when uh, uh, when when people don't realize that, but you can have a dog that's uh, that's really a really tough uh, biter on a suit uh, in a training, but uh, when when uh, the real situation comes and a lot of things change. Uh, that's the environmentals that makes make him actually lesser lesser biter, lesser fighter because all of a sudden he is he is um, busy, Aware. worried, <laughs> occupied with all with all the things that happen around him. Uh, so he is half of the percent of biter that you saw uh, you see in a, in a regular training, um, in in a club where he's an absolute beast. Uh, but then in reality, it's not actually the the, uh, the the issue with uh, with the, uh, bite equipment um, that you know uh, uh, a lot of people say well he's he's only equipment read and it, that's why he didn't engage but a lot of times is uh, that the dog is so so frustrated from a new place that it just doesn't click yeah but and the the question I I think Leos was that uh, selecting eh. But yes. the, re the real selection begins much, much, much further, further before. Because um, I think that in general, people select on, on, on dogs they really, really like, they, they see in real life, and they say, oh, fuck, this is a nice dog. But I think if you really want to breed very, very good and, and consistent and, and, and uh, uh, a good amount of uh, dogs in a little really good, then it's not the question, this is a really good dog. No, it must come from a really, really good litter. So brothers, sisters must be really good. I think that is the selection I make. I, if I buy a super nice female, and I did many, 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 and I know this is the only female I saw from this litter is really good. Yeah, I sell it because for sure it will never bring a full litter of nice puppy because it's just one so i think if you really go down to uh, uh, something i learned very long ago is that even my father did it my father said always to me that uh, look at the litter look at brothers look at sisters and the and you don't have to take a dog who's really uh, uh, sky high and super crazy and, and 
But if you go to a steady quality dog, you can really work with, and the whole litter is like that, then if you take a female from that, breed it to a male from same kind of combination, with also with brothers, sisters, really nice, and the, 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 the odds are raising much, much higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally agree. Um, I must say that um, this is one of the one of the things that you told me many many years ago. Um, you know, to see the entire litter, not only that one dog um, that you're looking at right now, but the whole litter. Um, and um, I've I've used that advice many times, and it always paid off. Hey, Sheldon, uh, Sheldon here, par uh, my partner. Uh, yeah, just just got here. Um, all right, yeah, uh, absolutely agree. Um, it's it's very very uh, good advice to look at the whole litter, uh, especially when you're looking for the breeding. Yeah, pl plus I think I think also important layoff is that that you really must uh, study study lines, really must know what because every line has pluses and minuses. Yeah. And really must uh, 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 look down into the line, see many dogs from that bloodline, and then make a decision from, hey, this is this type of dog, and maybe I can use it perfectly this time in my litter, or in my litter, but maybe mm. not now, but maybe in the future. You know? So it's very, very important to see what other people are doing. I think, I think that... that uh, uh, many people are quite blindfolded. They only love this bloodline or love this bloodline or love this bloodline. Only train dogs with that, only buy dogs from that. And I think the combination of bloodlines, if you're very clever and really know uh, all ins and outs, I think uh, uh, maybe a, a male you, you think you're not going to use this year or next year, but maybe in five or six years can be can be super valuable for you. Hey, uh, uh, Cameron, let me ask you a question. So we have some more questions about from Adam. Yeah, go ahead, no problem. Uh, Adam and then and other guys, but uh, this is this is something uh, I want to throw out there. Um, what do you think about um, the nowadays kind of um, standard, or you know, it's 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 becoming very popular that all the people are extremely uh, focused on uh, on um, on a prey draft of the dog. By the way, one of the question was, so was the difference between prey draft, hunt draft, and fight draft? We'll get to that later. But uh, yeah, um, so so nowadays everybody is is extremely driven and 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 and, and um, um, obsessed with uh, with huge uh, strong prey draft, right? They want to yeah. see the possessiveness and the prey draft, and I think it's a difference between. And uh, so just let me finish that. That thought is uh, uh, what I'm really start missing on those dogs uh, is um, a natural aggression. Um, so, in other words, you have a dog that that is 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 destroying balls, destroying sleeves, uh, destroying any kind of equipment. But when you bring him to a to a regular situation, or uh, or even a, a, a regular human comes, uh, you 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 back tie the dog to a fence. You come at the dog, and uh, and and then the dog just doesn't know what to do. It wants to run away. It doesn't have that natural. Hey, back off, motherfucker! I'm gonna whoop your ass. You know, hmm. um, that, those dogs. I I was. I was really used to when I was growing up uh, to these dogs. <laughs> and basically, when you when you left a dog by a by a back tie, you know anywhere, and there was nobody could come close to the dogs. And nowadays, you come, you take the dog, you have a ball, you give the dog uh, dog a ball, and you take him back home with you. It's almost yeah. like you have to have a one real dog to uh, to uh, make sure that nobody steals another of five of your dogs that are super strong on a prey draft. But that's what bothers me nowadays that um, that you don't have those that that natural aggression of those dogs that that are coming to uh, uh, to law enforcement um, and uh, in in general even in, in children's IPOs and all these sports um, uh, nowadays that people are coming to uh, that playful obedience and everything. Don't get me wrong. Teaching that is is absolutely does, it has its own place in the, in the entire process. But uh, yeah. I'm still kind of lacking those dogs that if you smack him, he's gonna look at you and say, 
you get away once, you do it twice, I'm all yeah. your ass. Yeah, I, 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 I think I have, a, I think I have a, 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 um, I have something for that question. I think what people, uh, uh, what people, uh, uh, what people uh, forget about it was that um, there is no dominance. And dominance, I mean, uh, with, with dominance, I mean uh, dominant aggression. Yeah. Um, I give you a good example. Uh, I, I play ball with my puppies and he brings it, spits it out, and I play and I play and I play and I play. Super nice. Super nice, search for it, no problem. But the other dog, I give him an object and he wants to flee with it. It's his, you know. He doesn't want to give it. And at the moment I want to take it, he shows his aggression. He wants to fuck him. He wants to fuck me up, you know, over the object. That's a, that. That is what I call dominant aggression because it's his, and it has nothing to do with prey drive. It's totally loose from prey drive. Prey drive is something moves. Dog gets excited and he wants to have it. Yeah, and from there on you build, you build, you build. But that dominant aggression. What I just talked, what I just talked about, that's something a dog must have. It's in his genetics. It's there or it's not there. I can also not train that. Like uh, the first time I did uh, uh, four or five months old, I, I want to do small small obstacle first with the jackal, and he had it so steady in the mouth I could not take it. So I have I took it from him. And I, I think, okay, I used to still a young puppy. I let him go and he bite me on the leg, unbelievable, over the object. So I, yeah, then I played a little bit with him. Yeah, let's keep it nice. I put it back in the ground again and the same thing happened again, you know. And that is because that, that is a kind of dominant, dominant aggression, what I miss in a lot of dogs with a lot of prey drive. Yep, 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 I, I, I would totally agree. And, and, and you can see it in the hunt already, you know, uh, uh, nine out of ten people are oh, super hunt drive on the dog, super. But is it based on play drive or prey drive or is it based on dominant aggression? Because I see many real dogs, they may be not so totally crazy, but <laughs> when they get the object, you're never going to take it from them. And for me... Uh, that, in my eyes, that that is the type of dog I want to work with. Yeah, yeah? Ab For absolutely. Myself. We just have Sheldon, Sheldon texting here that uh, you know Sheldon uh, start working with me even in suit and all that. Um, and I'm gonna just throw it in there. Sheldon has been uh, 14 years with Special Forces. He's, he's a tough dude, and he's getting in the suit uh, with me. And and, and uh, you know. Um, and uh, so he just said the same thing, you know, if, if you have a dog that's a prey drive and you start, you know, messing, with, messing around with the dog, um, he, he just said that uh, there's a huge difference between dog that has a uh, dominant aggression and who has a prey drive, who is a strongly prey driven dog. Uh, he said that you can feel the difference in the suit. Oh, sure. And that's, sure. Uh, uh, you know, I would, I would also say that, um, Aggression is important in many, many other things. It's also important in, uh, I don't know, guys, if you realize it, but uh, aggression, dominant aggression, is important in, in, in uh, regular stuff like uh, uh, narcotics, like, like detection. Um, it's important in, in obedience. It's important in uh, a regular, um, uh, even like uh, tracking. Uh, where does it come in? Uh, probably many of you are thinking, what is this guy talking about? Well, I'll explain it to you. Um, uh, dominant aggression is, is, is a feature when, when something, something or some, if you are doing something and some, you, uh, something, uh, somebody puts an obstacle in front of you, uh, just like Helmut Reiser explains it, you know, uh, 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 gray, blue, uh, and green. Um, uh, well, the thing is, if you uh, if you're not aggressive and there's an obstacle in your way to the goal, well, you start thinking: Is it really worth it? Um, sh uh, should I go around? Uh, the, the the animal gets discouraged in uh, proceed uh, proceeding that that goal. But if you have that aggression, the animal will go will say, "No, fuck it, I'm going through." 
um, and just 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 re remind you know uh, recall how many times you had a dog that was searching for something and then he came to a big huge pile of stuff and dogs that don't have enough aggression in them they start walking around it the dog that has aggression in him will just go straight through the pile and find it um, so natural aggression in my opinion is very important to have in those dogs and it's very important for handlers to understand how important it is in every other field than just the bite work. Um, so um, I believe that um, this is the biggest problem that uh, nowadays all these law enforcement guys and, and, and even in sport, people are looking for playful, um, very easygoing dogs. Yeah, but again, wanna... aggression helps in every single discipline, not just bite work. Yeah. But I, th I think that nine, nine out of ten people go for the easy way uh, layoff. If you have a prey drive dog and has a nice grip and he is super nice hunt, uh, for sure will never give any first time handler a problem. You want to understand why, why, where I'm going? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. except, except the problem that the dog lacks drive. Yeah, for sure. If, but if you're really going into the real stuff, and the real stuff is what we really want, yeah, then you must have that dominant aggression. Then training will never be super easy, yeah. But the the dog also show that he's not that he's an ass on the street, you know. And that is what we want to see. If he show in training that he can be an ass, yeah. Then for sure on the street he will show that he's an ass. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is what, I, and that is the thing. But still, we must not be stupid because he must still be controlled. But you, even with you and I, you, you know a little bit now how Jacko is. Yeah? I told you he's not that angry. Yeah, but he hates strangers. He simply hates them. He did it from 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 ten weeks off, even even before that, and. Um, that kind that comes from his dominant aggression because uh, uh, everything he knows is, is okay, but everything he doesn't know, he says, "Okay, let's go, let's let's go ahead," you know. And and uh, and for breeding, I look for that type of dog because I know that maybe not every puppy, but many puppies will at least have something from that. Yeah, totally agree. Hey, Herbert, I have another question here. And the question is, uh, difference between starting a puppy and uh, and we're talking about law enforcement work. Yeah. Um, uh, difference, the law enforcement or serious uh, uh, personal protection. Yeah. And I'm talking about serious protection. Hey, guys, listen. So just recently I saw this post and I see these trainers and it just uh, makes me makes me just uh, go crazy uh when we're saying uh, when we say personal protection that means when a guy or two guys or three guys get in your house and your dog is in the living room and the, 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 those three guys go in uh, through a living room they will not make it out or any further okay that's a personal protection i yeah. i just saw this renowned guy that you know he's um he's very famous because he sells some equipment and he's um He's uh, he's showing this dog that uh, a, pr a regular person approaches the dog. Dog hides behind the behind the owner, and it's just so uh, uh, it's running away. And and um, uh, uh, and then now he's he's saying that he's going to train him up for a person protection. That's a lie. If somebody tells you that, you can never fix dog like that. Okay, Forget because it. the dog is scared of a regular human. He will never be a man stopper, and uh, and and to so to tell somebody you're gonna train this dog for personal protection is just simply crazy. Okay, um, so so once again, we're talking here about law enforcement or seri uh, a serious personal protection. Uh, what is the difference between starting a puppy and uh, let's say one or one and a half year old um, dog? I th I think. With a puppy, a, a puppy can never have the dominance and the, the, the power uh, we need for a, a, a strong duel, uh, a, a strong personal protection dog. A puppy can never have that. He can only show potential. Yeah? So 
even if we start with a puppy who will show potential, it never is 100% that we get what we want. But if a dog is about 13, 14 months old, he must for sure have it. So if I understand correctly, what you're saying is, just to wrap it up for, for some guys that might not understand, what we're saying here, if we're starting with a puppy, um, what we basically uh, are focusing on is to develop, and, and thanks for this answer, because I'm going to just uh, build on that a little bit. So what we're doing is um, when we started with the puppy, um, you have to develop his drives. You have to build his Absolutely. personality. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, so from puppy till one year old, all you worry about is the way he understands the world, the, uh, um, um, the, 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 that he's sound on his nerves, that he's not afraid to go downtown and places like this, that oh, he's used to... Play. Uh, exactly. That he's That's used to sure. deal with, with things that pop up. Yeah. Uh, so the general development of the puppy, the general development of droughts, that's what you, that's what you worry about yeah. with the puppy to one year old. Um, yeah. Basically, honestly, I was actually having a conversation the other day here with some guys and they say, hey, it's so cool that um, I saw this video that uh, already three months old puppy is, uh, is imprinted on odors. Uh, and you know this is this is I, I kind of laughed at it. Uh, it's it's cute, yeah. right? It's cute. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that uh, exactly what you just said, Kerbin here. Um, rather than you know, you can put a dog on an odor in two days. That's not. So why do you need to start in three months? Even uh, you quicker. Know, obviously, you have the whole year before the dog goes to any kind of service or anything like that. So. Exactly what, what you're saying here, Herbin, I love it. That I, I'm, I'm really happy you said that. A lot of people are showing off that uh, 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 a dog can uh, do obedience in three months. Dog can, uh, is imprinted an odor in, in three or four months. But is the, is the puppy really developed? It does, is, he, is he very confident in, in regular life situations? Is he really uh, confident in dealing with any kind of stress that's put in front of him? That's the most That's the biggest the, the, the biggest problem is distractions. That's the biggest problem. That's why we need strong environmentals. Because a dog who has strong environmentals is not easily distracted from his task. What his mind put him to, he for sure will do. But if he's not steady on the nerves, he sees the whole world as his enemy, you know, and that gives so much distractions that he simply blocks down. He cannot work anymore. Yeah, even I see really, really good dogs on the club and you think, oh, this is super nice, really, really nice. Yeah. And I come across the guy one time at the street. I think, fuck, is that the same dog, you know, because... It, that is the case. I, th I think outside the work, the dog must have the dominant aggression, strong nerves, everything, the whole package. Because if he does not have it, for sure, I run into problems later on. Oh, for absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Look, there was, a, there was a German Shepherd, um, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. Um, he was a two, two times world champion, three, maybe three times world champion in IPO. German Shepherd, the dog was from uh, Slovakia. Uh, the whole world was breeding that dog like crazy. He looked very good on the field, man. So I was in the in the uh, at the World Championship with the um, uh, uh, same time uh, with this guy, um, uh, and uh, uh, so between those two days of a competition. Uh, we walked down the street in the downtown. This guy actually ha has this dog walking him through the through the street. The dog comes to a freaking stop sign, looks at the stop sign, and got tail in between the legs and jerked back so strongly that he almost dislocated his shoulder. <laughs> All right. So and then, and everybody believed that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gabby. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the dog. Exactly. Yeah, that's him. And so I'm looking at it, and until then, the dog was a champion to me, okay? It was, it was yeah, a for sure. nice, beautiful, strong dog. Yeah. When I saw him freaked out like this out of, uh, from a stop sign, I was like, come on, guys, really? So 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is that people need to be careful about breeding these champions and always, uh, always, uh, you know, go see those dogs for themselves. And just like you said, you said it many times today, uh, the environmentals and the, the life in the regular, regular, regular life out there is way more important than anything else. Absolutely. I think it's the biggest. For me, it is the biggest. Because I simply don't come across a lot of dogs who don't have the drive. Yeah? The drives we really need for the work. I simply don't come across dogs I cannot teach biting uh, good enough. Yeah? But I do come across a lot of dogs that have shit nerves. Yeah? So I go test and I... Okay, yeah. on drive is there, biting is there. And then I take him in a different place where he was never before. I say, fuck, he breaks down completely, you know. And there, that is for me the biggest deal breaker. Yeah, if, if the hunt drive can be a little bit more and he's super biter and his environmental nerves are really good, it gives me something to work with. But if the nerve's not good, you can simply not fix it. It's not trainable. Everything yeah. you can get him a little bit better, but never at the level it's required. And uh, you know, it's uh, that's uh, it's funny you say that. So I have a I have a dog in my kennel right now. Um, the dog is extremely guys. The dog is extremely strong on prey drive. I'm saying when I'm saying extremely, I mean he can he can destroy a Kong in little. You cannot take it away if you give him sleep. He will kill the entire planet if somebody tries to touch it. Possessiveness. His biting is insane. He he drives everything he can down the throat. His bites are super deep, strong, trashing the guy. So when you see that dog biting, you say, wow, I've never seen beasts like that. And I've seen thousands of dogs, okay? Until you take the guy, if you, until you take the, uh, I took the dog to downtown. Well, not really downtown, but I took him out of the kennels to our um, another facility. Um, and uh, no, no, that's not Benno. I'm talking about some other dog. Um, and I took him outside. It was a decoy, and this dog would kill for decoy, okay? That was a decoy. The dog was so scared of everything he saw around that no matter what the decoy did, Never the dog did not care for him. No matter what ball you threw around the dog, he would not care for the ball. Yet in his, his natural uh, environment, his training club or anything like that, the dog was a monster that you have never seen before. So th this is just to point out how important is what, you, what you're saying um uh Herman, it's 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 extremely important i think most important for me yeah for me as a breeder and I, and and for me as i want to breed and develop a really good dog for work i think that's the, the 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 biggest case so i really look for bloodlines and really look for dogs who have environmental strong nerves by genetics and don't throw them in the kennel with six weeks, take them out with a year, and then you have a good dog. That's not what I, what I say. But by genetics, I mean, if you just do normal, you take them from here, you take them from there, you don't have to run over them. But then they study, they have, if you take them one or two times to the club, you take them a few times to the city, uh, and in a, in a lifespan from six, seven months, and uh, you make sure they get in contact with other dogs, you make sure they get in contact with other people, you let yeah. somebody else run, down, run the dog down a little bit. Then, I got another question here, uh, Herbin, so we can move forward. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, um, so there was another question, uh, somebody was asking, uh, hey Dan, Dan to uh, Great Britain, greetings brother, good to see you here. Um, uh, Anubis, uh, canine, absolutely agree. Yeah, you, you absolutely right. Um, so here's the, here's the question. Um, uh, 
uh, here's the question. Uh, what uh, about pep puppy selection? How do you go about how do you go about puppy selection, Carbon? Yeah, I did, it, it's a kind of feeling, uh, Leos. Um, because puppies, if one puppy can be one day strong and the other day another puppy is strong. One has a little bit more worms, uh, other one has a little bit lesser worms. Uh, this one uh, is, is not so strong by body, it's a little bit smaller dog, get in the fight with the other puppy who is much stronger by body, but much lesser by mind. And, and, and uh, what I basically do, I, this is really the case with me, and, and, and I'm pretty sure people who know me also know that's absolutely the truth. When puppies leave at my house with seven, eight weeks old, they're crazy for a bunch of teeth. They bite good and they're crazy for jerry cam. So in drive, I already have them ready. At least started. Yeah. Why do I do it? It's very simple because there are levels in everything what you want to see. Uh, if I see the drive on the jerry cam in one puppy, and he bites like crazy on it, barks on it, whatever I want to see. And it touch him and it hurts him. And next time I see him a little bit lesser, hey, then my mind already said, hey, that's maybe not one for me. Yeah. Biting. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Biting, it's, it's, it's a little bit the same, you know. Uh, so I, I start quite early four weeks. At the moment, they take uh, steady food. It's normally for me, it's time to, to start uh, 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 doing a little bit here and doing a little bit there because they must be hungry to start them in drive. And you know what you know that, and I explained you that many times before. Yeah. Yeah. So if he's a full belly, he goes in the corner, he goes to sleep, and he will sleep all day. And nine out of ten people. Uh, who are want an easy litter? They put all their food there, and the litter will not make much noise, but also not much work. Yeah. Yep. So with me, they're hungry and eager, and uh, so I can start doing this and doing that and doing that and doing that, and I do many things with them. You know, it's a lot of work uh, raising a litter, and uh, yeah, and also uh, uh, it's 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 never. Uh, uh, I put the perfect mother, put the perfect father. The outcome is always, it stays always a gamble. It gets lesser a gamble if you do your homework. But still, I'm not God. So that's the... Oh, so uh, honestly, uh, I totally agree with you. And it's um, the same way with the puppies. Yeah. Um, I, feed, uh, I feed puppies um, four or five times a day, but just a very little. Yeah. Uh, little. Basically, every time... Uh, I, most of the time with puppies, um, I don't have, you know, a lot of puppies. I have only one or two I'm always raising. Uh, they're always with me 24-7. Anywhere I perfect. go to hop out of the car, no matter where I go, gas station, they're, they're always with me. Um, but what I'm saying is that um, they always get a little bit, a little bit of food at a time. Um, basically, when, when they're done eating, they they still starving. Um those those puppies are and every time every time and I don't care what puppies I take from the litter. You 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 come, you take all you want, to pick up the best. If I'm left yeah. with the with the worst puppies, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, um and uh what I'm saying is that they're always so eager for the survival. They're always looking to do something, always on on their toes. And yeah. um That's they always end up be different uh, different animals from the from the rest of the bag. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Of course. But still, it makes our job super easy if genetically everything is already there. Absolutely. Totally agree, yeah. That makes it easy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I got, another question from, uh, I got another question from Poker Boy. <laughs> uh, what are some other ways to tap into your dog drive rather than lowering the food? Yeah, I think I think there is a, a a lot of I think to be to be to know what drive is, you have to break it down to what is the use for drive. So, why does a puppy make drive? I think that that is the question. Is there a other way of of uh, make sure 
uh, you can do it without food. I think a drive a dog is born with. Yeah. Uh, that's why you have dogs with lesser drive, more drive, extreme drive, because genetically it's already there. It's not that if we start training, developing, uh, uh, we can make it to the max, but then still a dog, average in drive will maybe be good, but never super. Yeah. So, um, food is a, for me a tool, and it's the only tool to start with a really young puppy because the lack of food makes him come into drive because that triggers him to do something. And to do something, I can uh, uh, introduce objects <coughs> to him, I can introduce situations to him. He's not lazy because when he is a full belly, he goes in the corner. So he needs to be hungry to come into drive because that is the trigger for him to do something. Exactly. Hey, yeah. so uh, I just want to add to this. I just want to add to this. Um, a lot of people is uh, concerned about their dog being big, right? They're very yeah. proud of their dog. So they want to they wanna go like, oh, my dog is a monster. He's huge. Guys, yeah, guys. size is given by genetics. Okay. Yeah. If genetically I'm supposed to be six feet, I'll be six feet. Okay. Yeah. And regardless if I eat or not eat, I will be six feet. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm five, six. And no matter what I did, what I ate or didn't eat or drank or didn't drink, I didn't grow any, any taller. Okay. No. That's, that's how it is. That's there. So, uh, uh, so, um, just like Herben says, and I like, I love, I love so me and Kevin, you know, see this, the things the same way. Um, just, just, just remind yourself something. All right, draws. What are the draws? The draws are tools to survive, right? So in the nature, what is all about? It's about safety. Well, the tool for safety is aggression, or flee. You know, fly, run away, or fight it. That's safety. Another thing. What What is another thing that you need to worry about in nature? Wolves or or or, or any other predator. Food. Well, with food, everything is connected with food. Prey drive is another tool to get fat. So the more hungry you are, the more sharper and harder you go after that prey to kill it. The more hungry you are, the, the harder you decide to kill that, that prey, whatever, however big that is. Because, you know, if you're not going to kill it now, you might go another three, four days without food. So that's what Kerman says. And uh, I love it. That's, you know, it's... Um, if the, uh, and, or, and we're at no point saying that you should starve the puppy. At no point, the puppy should not be uh, skinny or anything like that. But again, if if if, if there's if there ha if the puppy has enough nutrition, uh, but still not overfed, he's gonna be active. He's gonna be looking for stuff. He's yeah, gonna be willing to do something. And you always have the paycheck for the puppy to pay him. If the puppy don't give a shit about food got plenty of water and feel plenty of safety what the fuck man just play the you know turn on the netflix and go fuck yourself bro hey sorry i need to watch my language my apologies <laughs> <laughs> i kept it nice this time okay so um um hey everybody can uh Everybody can see. Hey, uh, uh, Poker Boy. Uh, um, so Poker Boy is asking. I was talking about an adult dog, not a puppy. So um, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you answer, Kevin. Uh, but uh, just one thing. Uh, of course, you can tap in other drafts with with the adult dog. Uh, it depends what you're looking for. Um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a plenty of ways. Uh, you know, you can use. Frustrations. You can use um, uh, a compulsion. You can use uh, a prey drop motivation. Uh, there's many ways how to work with the dog, but it should always be a complex of uh, many different um, tools and many uh, activation of many different drafts. Because um, so, look, if you're trying to explain dog something and use a prey drop, prey drop is a tool for 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 hunt kill. Uh, hunt down and kill 
that's a war mode. So if you use him prey job to explain dog something and he's in a war mode, how much is he going to play, uh, uh, pay attention? It's just like me trying to explain something to a human and, and, uh, 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 and start boxing in, in between that. Or take him to a Super Bowl, I try to explain him mathematics in the middle of the Super Bowl. The motivation is just so strong to that other stuff that you don't really listen to that pop. So when you when you're using food, he's he's interested in the food. So you have a certain level of motivation, but it's not over the top. Um, so so everything has its own phases. Uh, you know, you do something little with the food, and you do then then when it's in, um, explained and introduced, then you got up that in motivation to a prey job. Um, unless you're you're old school and you do everything by compulsion, which uh, has its own positive, but a lot of negatives too. Um, but yeah, man, um, sorry, Kevin, jump in, you know, um, tell them what do you think about that? I, th I think everything has to go for one thing. And that is create the right mindset in your dog for the exercise you want him to do. So uh, then you... The, the first thing what you must know is you must know your dog. You must know his behavior. You must know what he's made of. You must know where his trigger, triggers will be. Yeah? So if you, if, you, if you give me a dog, uh, here you have it. Uh, make drive on the dog. I have it just in my hands. And I say, yeah, what? Yeah, I can do what Leo says. I can play a little bit around. I can try to get him into prey drive. I can, I can do all those kinds of things in training. That's not a problem. But the thing is, if you really want to improve something, you must know where your dog is made of. What is his character? What triggers him? Uh, uh, and, and, and this is what I normally uh, uh, look at. Uh, before I even start training, I already look at this dog is made of this. This triggers him. Here, uh, he show drive even without me doing anything. I can make that stronger and make it better because he showed it me out of drive. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, if I have a dog for one or two days in my kennel and I walk, walk him a few times, I work him a little bit, then I decide, oh, you, you're made of this, you made, you're, you're like this, you're like this, you're like this, you're like this. And of course, um, I have a big advantage that I have, my father was in dogs, uh, uh, I lived dogs my, all my life, uh, uh, so I have a lot of, um, yeah, just what Leo said, uh, a lot of uh, experience about it. So it easy, it's then it's easier to put him in a box, okay, I cannot put any compulsion on him because that gives me later on problems with, with something else, you know. So it's for me very important to first read the dog and that takes a little bit of time and then I can decide on which way I'm going to make more drive or maybe I don't, don't want even more drive on him because drive is not always necessary. Oh, sorry. No, man, it's <laughs> They're yeah. just commenting on me, uh, trying to uh, read in these comments real hard. Yeah, I'm, yeah, guys, I'm blind. I need glasses. I know, but and I didn't sleep last night much, so yeah, I'm I'm super tired too. So it doesn't help at all. Yeah, I really need some glasses. <laughs> yeah. Man, sorry, sorry, Kevin, jumping into it, but uh, I think you summed it up really good. Exactly, you know. Uh, you have to understand what uh, what the dog is made out of, and then and then start using using. Uh, uh, the assets or, or the, the, the draws that uh, uh, he came with. Um, yeah, and it's uh, difficult for me to say because I'm pretty sure he asked before because, uh, because of uh, a certain dog he has in mind and, and uh, how can I make more drive on that dog. But there are so many different types of dogs. There are so many different ways of getting him into, into drive and to increase drive or even to put drive down because sometimes it's required to teach exercises almost with no drive, yeah? Because, yeah, I think, I think when a dog is too high in drive, he can also not think, you know? He's just doing something. 
So sometimes it's very important that to teach something in low drive and then, in, then slowly increase the drive, put in more drive. You know, you know uh, training is quite complex. You know, it's Exactly, like, I totally yeah. agree with you. Uh, something that people don't realize a lot of time, it's, it's not, it's, sometimes it's not about the drive itself. Uh, no. It's about it's about um, uh, condition re uh, reaction or uh, condition uh, condition condition reflexes of 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 that. So, for instance, tracking right. Uh, uh, very often, uh, if you if you come to a long long distance tracking, it's not about the initial uh, 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 reward that you started with on on your first fifty yards, but uh, uh, creating the exercise properly. Uh, that track itself becomes the motivation, right? And Absolutely. what kind of drop? What kind of drop is that? That's nothing but a uh, anticipation or excitement, and and um, so th 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 that's also very important to understand that uh, that's part of the that's part of the, the the science behind the training. Yeah, there's a lot of science behind training. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's that's why we figure and we we are awake almost every night and think about our problems and try exactly. to solve it and fuck i now have this dog and I, you always run into problems you know and that is but the thing is that uh even now today every day you can learn something you know that is that is how it is hey i got so, another question here i actually like that question and then uh, the question is very uh, very up to date here in the United States. I see a lot of things and a lot of guys are uh, doing uh, crazy stuff. And there's a, a lot of uh, um, trainers that popping up left and right that, um, that um, will tell you that they have exact solution to that. So the question is, switching the dog from bite suits um, in training to a raw bite on a street. And I have a I have a whole lot I want to say about that, but uh, I'll let you go. So, so, people, so the people tell me, hey, Leo, I came here for Caribbean. You won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real bites. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a different way, you know. That is a different world. Yeah. I think, I think to be honest to you, if you have a, a, a dominant, aggressive dog, he is never uh, equipment oriented. Um, and, and how can I say, and, and, and uh, my strong belief in that is that, uh, and I know for sure that is true, yeah, uh, take any dog I trained, take any dog I, uh, I worked, and of course uh, we have a sport, sporty dog on the club and he will not bite a single for sure. Uh, but the dominant aggressive dogs don't need much to bite for real. Absolutely, hey Kevin, it's uh, it's actually exactly the same thing I believe, and uh, and I, I just want to just elaborate on that a little bit. We have only uh, one minute and sixteen seconds left for this session, mm -hmm. um, so so this is this is how I see it, and and, and same thing with scenarios and all that. Um, uh, you have to see what the what the real drafts are, what the real reason behind the dog biting is. Uh, yeah. If you have pure prey draft, uh, basically you can almost say like a toy driven dog. Uh, uh, we're we're really talking about prey draft. Uh, the biggest problem with uh, with training here in the United States, a lot of decoys is that um, they uh, they see and they go and study uh, guys from Camp PV. You know, that beautiful biceps bite and dog is driving into it. <laughs> but guys, let me ask you, what's, what's, what's the real reason for the dog biting? Is it possession? Because uh, any dog that's decent in possession is going to do that. Is it prey drive? Same thing, right? Um, what, how, many, how many decoys actually can dissect? What's the reason behind the bite on the suit? Is it prey drive? How much there is a prey drive? How much there is aggression? And come on, guys, there's two, two types of aggression. There's a self-preservation aggression. The dog is fighting because he's afraid he's going to get his ass whooped. And there is a, like everyone says, nasty dominant aggression.